What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Now I know sometimes things can be chaotic when you're going to a shoot to the location where you're stuffing everything in your bag and then the car ride where you're just waiting, wondering if you have everything. I've been in this situation multiple times where I'm going to a shooting location and I just have to sit in the car and wonder whether or not I have everything in my bag or what I could possibly be missing. Fear no more, I've gathered up my top seven things that you need to have on set when you're filming a video. So stay tuned, it's coming up. All right, now let's talk about the most important thing that you're going to be having there, and that is your camera. So what kind of camera should you be bringing? I get this question a lot. Lots of beginner filmmakers wonder what their first camera should be or what specific camera they should get. And really, it just depends on whichever one suits your needs the most. If you're going to be a lot shooting in low light, then you'd want to get something that's really good with that, like a Sony. But if you're doing extra color grading and you really want those good cinematic colors, then you're going to want to go for a Canon. So it all depends on what you want. But I think the guidelines that you should follow is get one that can shoot in 1080p at 24 frames per second with manual controls. I've got my Canon Vixia HF R800, which is perfect for video and it gets really good quality video and it's what I'm shooting on right now to shoot these talking head segments. I also have a Nikon D5200 that I use for taking pictures and some b-roll shots. I think overall my main camera would be the Vixia HF R800. It's easier to carry, easier to use, and gives pretty much of the same quality image. And because the only guidelines are 1080 by 1920, what res does your phone shoot? 1080p, 4K, maybe. So really, your phone is a really good option. So if you have a phone, then you can use that and it'll still give off a really good high quality image with a manual camera app like Filmic Pro. So it doesn't really matter what camera you have as long as it suits your needs or and what you're going to be doing as a filmmaker. And so the conclusion to this part of the video is that you probably can check camera off your list by using whatever you have, whether that might be a phone or a little camcorder like this. If you know how to use it, then you could probably make a good looking image off of it. The next thing on our list is a tripod. Now tripods are really important and you don't really realize that you need them that much until they break. Let's imagine you're the cameraman and an actor, like I am in all my movies. Nobody is going to be there to film because you're with all your friends, you're the cameraman and you're the actor, so you have to figure out a decent way to film yourself. And a tripod is one of the best ways to do this. When my tripod broke a couple years back, I realized how much I needed it. And I was literally filming on a stack of books on a stool. My Amazon Basics tripod, which I use all the time, has lasted me two years and I've been using it since the briefcase brawl days. It's only $17 on Amazon and I'd recommend this as a good beginner tripod because it has a quick release plate and very smooth functions. And it can go very high and very low if you need those two options. So definitely a good idea if you want to look into getting a tripod. And another thing is, when I was setting my camera on a book, on books on a stool, you have to make sure that you trust whatever you're putting your camera on because if you don't, then it can fall and your camera could break. And especially if you only have one or two, like I do, if your camera breaks, that's a big deal. So having a tripod with, with a quick release plate where you can screw it in will, will really help you out with your videos because you wanna make sure you trust what you're putting your camera on because if it falls, that's the end. And this next thing that I'm going to list I'm only gonna go over it briefly because it kind of speaks for itself, but memory. Running out of memory in the middle of a film shoot is the worst thing in the world. You can't imagine that. You run out of memory, you can't do anything else. You can't shoot any other video without going home, backing it up to a hard drive, unless you already brought that with you. But it sucks. You're gonna wanna have at least two 32 gigabyte memory cards with you. Especially if you're doing a short film with long takes, then you're probably gonna run out of those very quickly. And if you run out of one, you're gonna have that second one for backup. So definitely make sure you bring about two memory cards when you're on a film shoot. Okay, so the next thing on our list is audio. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have good audio because it's 50% of the viewing experience. So let's talk about this, a before and after. Now that before was my camera quality audio, which sounds a little bit muffled, quiet, and echoey. But when you've got a lav mic like this one, it can really help enhance the quality audio that you've got with a little tweaks and post as well. Audio is about 50% of the viewing experience. If you don't have any audio, 
It's a silent film, which may be better than having trashy, echoey, loud, clipping audio the entire time of your film. So it's definitely something to look into and also something overlooked by a, lo by a lot of other filmmakers. So what kind of microphones should you get? Should I buy one? The one I'm using right now is the Boya BY-M100, which I did a review on a couple months ago. So you can check that out right up here if you would like to. Another one I'd recommend is the Rode Video Micro, which is kind of a small little boom mic that you can attach to the top of your camera or on a boom pole in front of you, and it will sound pretty good. Now, I record all my audio externally, so if one were to fail, I'd always have backup audio in case you just can't fix anything in post. Most camera audio you can fix in post, and the audio on this camcorder isn't terrible, but it's pretty bad. So that way, if I had skip recording on one or the audio was just clipping, then I could easily switch to my camera audio if need be. Okay, now my next one is a little bit random, but it's actually pretty necessary, and I use it all the time on my shoots. And actually, it's a folder. For one, it helps me keep organized, and I can put all my papers, shot lists, and scripts in there. So if we need to look at them, they won't be blowing around because they'll be in this folder. Since if we lose one video file or one page of a script, then that could really throw us off and kind of mess the whole thing up. But staying organized isn't the only reason I have a folder with me. If it's colored, then you can use it as a gel and put it over your lights. But I shoot outside with all natural light, so I use a white one as a bounce board to reflect the light coming from the sun as a fill light on the other side to bounce light off from, from the sun to the folder and back onto my face. Because even if you're shooting outside, lots of people just think that there's nothing you can do, you know? The sun will take care of it. You don't need any external lights because the sun is there and there's nothing you can do about where the sun is. But you can sort of position where your camera and your actor is to kind of compensate with that and bouncing light from another spot if it's too dark. Also, bouncing light provide a softer light than harsh sunlight. So definitely something to look into. And a folder, they're super cheap. You can get them at Dollar Tree or anywhere for really cheap. And I have a lot of them from doing my schoolwork. So it's definitely nice to have when you're on a film shoot. And this next thing might sound a little bit weird because like most people probably wouldn't bring this on their film shoot, but I have a full green screen in my backpack when I'm shooting. It does seem strange. I mean, nobody really brings a full green screen in their backpack because most kids my age don't really do that much VFX shot. They try to do it all in camera, which it'll always look better. But sometimes I'm doing a stunt, which happen a lot in my movies. It's just a lifesaver for most VFX shots. This will save you a whole bunch of painstaking rotoscoping, which I know most of us probably hate. And then in the front pockets of my bag, I have these little things like duct tape, clamps, for pinning my green screen up, props, and your phone for recording audio. All these small things can make all the difference and can be a lifesaver when you're on set. So this was a long video. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. And make sure to keep these in mind next time you're on a film shoot. You keep all these in mind next time you're on a film shoot. And even the small knickknacks that I mentioned at the end, like duct tape, can be necessary. So stay safe, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video.